Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Cat Studio and today we're going to make a fun folio and for that we're using uh, this pattern paper by Country Craft Creations called Winter Wonders. Wonders. Um, these are 12 by 12 sheets. You do not have to cut them down to 12 by 12. They don't have any extra tabs on them like the other packs of Cartabella do and all those other ones. So um, we'll put this off to the side for now. And we're gonna use some heavyweight cardstock. I'm using Recollections 110 pound cardstock. I believe we need three, four, six sheets of that. We need one sheet of Oh, here it is. One sheet of 65 pound cardstock. We're going to put that off to the side for just a moment. And we're going to need some glue. I'm using Barely Art uh, craft glue, a ruler, a pencil, and a scoring board, which I, I'll pull that out in a minute, um, a trimmer. And today we're going to start with um, changing the blade on the trimmer so that we get nice clean cuts. So the way I, we do that is be very careful with the new blade. <laughs> um, I put it up about, I don't know what, seven or eight inches and just press this down and this comes right out. Take the blade out carefully. And I usually wrap that and then put it in the trash and then put the new blade in. Again, don't touch the blade. Press the ends like so. And then go back and, and do the same thing. Press, press on the back portion around seven inches and then just press that back. It just pops right in. There you have it. Also, if you get paper chunks in here, you need to get them out. And I use this little pokey tool that I use for clay. Clean that out, and now we're ready to start. All right, we're gonna start by uh, doing our cuts first, instead of, we'll do scoring second. Um, we're gonna cut our eight and a half by 11 inch um, sheet, one of them, we're gonna cut it five and a half inches. on the 11 inch side, five and a half. So we have two sheets at five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. The next sheet we're gonna cut is gonna be cut on the 11 inch side as well at six and a half. Save this piece. And one more from the 110 pound cardstock at six and a half. Oops, and that corner is bent. Again, you can save this sheet for another um, folio. So we have our six and a half by eight and a half, our five and a half by eight and a half, and then we also have our eight and a half by 11. We have, we only need two more sheets of that. Um, we are also going to take our 65 pound uh, piece of cardstock and we're going to cut that on the eight and a half side at four and a quarter. And that will be in half. Those should be the same. They are. All right. And then we're going to cut one of them at seven and a half inches, I believe. Yes, seven and a half inches. Just looking at my directions. <laughs> this this part right here is a new feature that we're adding in. And I don't need this, I'll keep that for notes. So this is the new feature. Put that off to the side for a moment. And then we'll bring back in our pieces that we cut and the pieces that we did not. We have two sheets of eight and a half by 11 that we did not cut. All right, 
right, let's bring our scoreboard in. And let's take our eight and a half by 11 inch sheets to the scoreboard on the 11 inch side and score at two and a half. Sorry about my finger. My finger has got a boo-boo today. Two and a half. At three inches. At nine inches. And at nine and a half. And that is the, we're going to mark that as the left side with the letter L on the left. And then we're going to put the right side piece in. Score that next, an R for the right side, the right of the right side. We're going to score that at two and a half. Two and three quarters. And eight and three quarters. And this end is the closure. So we need another score line here. We'll do it after we put the folio together so that we don't make it too skinny because this is gonna be a little bit thicker, uh, maybe. We'll see. But I, I don't like to mark that right away. Um, okay, so we have our two sheets that we are right and left. Now let's bring in our six and a half by eight and a half, those two pieces that we cut. On the six and a half side, we're gonna score at five and three quarters and six inches. And the next one we're gonna score a little different. We're gonna score that at five and three quarters and five and seven eighths, which is gives you an eighth inch uh, gusset there. All right, those two sheets are done. So that was the six and a half pieces that we put gussets in. We do not score anything on the five and a half uh, by eight and a half pieces. Now take your two pieces that you cut at four and a quarter and one at seven inches and this one is 11 by four and a quarter. Put that piece in your scoreboard and score at five and a half, inch and three quarters, boop, boop, boop. nine and a quarter. That's your long piece. So those those score lines again are five and a half, inch and three quarter, nine and a quarter. I don't know why I did the half one first, but you get the idea. And then let's bring the seven and a half inch piece in on the seven and a half inch side. We're gonna score at three and three quarters. And that should be right in half. All right, now that we're done scoring and cutting, we're gonna fold and crease everything.
Okay, now that everything is folded and creased, we're gonna to start to glue things together. Let's start with the left and right pieces and put your right on the right side and the left over on the left. Put some glue and get started. All right, let's open up the center. You see you have two score lines here and then we're gonna press this gusset flat so that we can see the gusset and we're gonna glue that down to that first score line you come to on your right. This goes together the same way as the fun folio does with the exception of we're not making pockets today. And my glue is being stubborn. All right, we're gonna glue this whole flap. And we'll take this and lay it right up against that first score line you come to. Even up the top and bottom, but we don't want it too close to that score line. We want this to still be able to be 90 degrees. Stand this up. Even it up. Press that in. Let's flip it over. Give it a good press. All right, now we're ready for the pages that we cut in half. That one that we cut at five and a half with no um, score lines on it. We're gonna glue that right down here um, to this whole flat. In the other video, we make a pocket out of this flap. Today, we are not doing that. I just thought it'd be nice to see, you know, one without the pockets. And if you prefer the pockets, you can put them in. I've even done this where I've instead of put the um, long pockets, I put one across. All right, press that whole page in. And we'll do the same for the left side. Lay that into that first score line you come to on your going towards your right. I don't know, it's the left, Gus, it's the left score line, I guess. <laughs> Press that in. And press this in. Alrighty, there's your folio. And it's upside down. Okay, so next, we will put the pages in that we put the gussets. So the bigger gusset goes on the left side, the smaller one goes in the back on the back page. So the way we put that in is we fold that, fold that flat so that your gusset is showing over here. We're only gluing this tab in into your book. that into that score line, that first one you come into, and not over it. Line up that page with your, yeah, I'm really off here right now. <laughs> Try again. Usually get it first time around. Yeah, I don't know what's going on today. It's just jumping every time I put it down. Let's try again. I'm holding them together now. <laughs> there, that's better. Let's make 
sure we got that right. Yep, we do. Press it in. And open that up. It looks to me like I got a little bit of paper showing at the bottom edge. Now, just trim that off. No one will notice. Trust me. All right, did we press that tab in? Yes, press your tab in. Let's go to the back page. And again, we'll press that only the tab so that our gusset, our really tiny gusset is on the other side showing. And I'm gonna trim, trim those corners. That way you won't have to worry about it sticking out. But sometimes scoring, you know, isn't perfectly straight. And you might get a little bit sticking out here and there. Okay, let's glue this in to this score line on, over on your right side. Without going over, line it up. And be careful with this one because you want it to be able to close. Alrighty, line that up nice. And press your tab in. Look, no tabs sticking out. <laughs> Alrighty. That is your folio put together so far. What we want to do next is, remember I said save that sheet. Take that to your scoreboard. Score one end of it at either, you can do this end a half inch or eight inches down here. Score it at eight inches. And fully crease that. And then we will put that in to our book in a moment. Let's glue together our little pieces that we made over here that were four and a quarter. And I'm sorry, four and a quarter and 11 and four and a quarter by seven and a half. Let's, what we're gonna do here is we're making this feature where when you open this up, it's gonna be a box. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? <laughs> So what we're gonna do is glue. Okay, you could do this on the outside or on the inside. This way or this way. It's not gonna show, so it doesn't matter which way you decide to do it. I think we're going inside. So open that tab up, put some glue on it. And then lay this piece in to the score line. And make sure you can fold it into a square. Press it down so that glue really sticks good to that. You don't want that coming apart. And then the next one, You get glued this way as well. So then you will have a square. You can see this will be a square. So what we're gonna do is put open this back up, glue on this inside of this tab. Now if you wanted to put cardstock on this, you could do it now or you could do it afterwards. We're gonna do it after. So I'm just gonna stand this up to make sure I'm getting that in there right. I'm gonna press it, close it up, press it down. All right, so what we need to do is, <laughs> we need to put this in so that we can see if this is scored right, I guess is the thing that I'm thinking. Okay, so let's open this book up. We're gonna glue this to the top here. 
And then we'll put our all our pattern paper on, which will cover this up. Well, this will cover that up as well. So I'm going to put it at the top edge in between this score line and this score line so that we have the same distance, hopefully. Let's see if we can figure that out before I press it in. I want to hold that there so it looks so I can tell if it's even. From the score, that's my six inch piece of paper. That's six inches here. So I do need to scoot this down a little bit. Waited too long. Okay, it'll still work. Set that in. I have trouble visualizing this with my tab showing or, you know, sticking out. So I have to have my little visual aid here for me so that I can get it centered. And I feel like it's too far that way now. Super close right there, so I'm leaving it there. See that? Okay. Press your tab in. Really good. And then eventually, your ends that you glued the tabs down will be the back and the bottom. So the bottom is one and the back is the other. So we'll glue that in and then lift. When you lift, you'll have this. But we will not put that in yet because um, we need pattern paper on. Okay, so let's get to the pattern paper and I'll show you how we do that. All right, let's get the pattern paper out. Let me just show you how we cut our pattern paper. And I will do that off camera and I'll leave the measurements in the description for you. This one is gonna be the cover, so I'm gonna to have to cut it like this here to get five and three quarter page uh, for the front. Um, so how I do this is I measure the page. Measure the page, six, and I know it's eight and a half, eight and a half. So I cut it a quarter inch smaller at five and three quarters, and then eight and a quarter. So that I have an eighth of an inch border around the whole piece. So I will leave all those measurements in the description so you don't have to do the measuring. But I do urge you to, you know, try and, you know, make sure you've got those measurements that will match because these they're all different. This page is smaller than this page. And again, I'll leave the measurements for you in the description. So let me get to the um, cutting all the paper and then I'll be back to decorate it with a little music. All right, it's time for some music and a little gluing.
Okay, we're back and I have most of the pattern paper on. So now what I'm gonna do is get this piece ready and then we'll do this uh, tab as well. We'll do that together. All right, for this, we only need two sheets of cardstock. You could use plain, you could use uh, pattern paper. It's, it's, you know, whatever you decide. Plus we need a piece for here. And this is gonna be in here. So I'm just trying to get an idea what I want. I think I want the plaid inside here. Yep. All right, we're gonna cut two sheets. And again, it's gonna be covered up by a photo, uh, most of that. So let's cut that. I need two pieces at three and a half by four inches. not four inches. All right, let's go with something else that I haven't cut yet. Let's go with this. Cut this to four inches. And three and a half, two sheets at three and a half. One. And two. Those will go on the pages that don't have your um, tabs on them. And you know, if you need to press this in again, it feels like it might be out of square a little bit. Then we're gonna pop these on and then we'll glue the whole thing in. And photos on here, I guess you'd have to custom cut them to fit. You could possibly, you know, get a square cutter or, or a circle cutter and cut out you know, a photo of someone and stick it on there. I think a circle would be cute. If you had two different size circles, you could cut one for the background of it. I mean, possibilities are just, you know, out there. All right, this is ready to pop into the book. Let's open that up. And how we're gonna do this is we're gonna glue one side in first. We're gonna glue this piece in, center it, and then we're gonna do it this way. <clears throat> so let's put glue on this piece here first. Oh no, let's do it the other way. Let's glue it in the book first. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Take that tab section that you put glue on and lay it in here centered. Between here, the edge of your um, flap. Close it, make sure it doesn't show down here. So then, Open that up a little bit and go and press that with your bone folder. Make sure you got a good connection there all the way around. So we don't want that lifting up on us. All right, now put your other section that has the tab on it, put glue on that whole square there. This is my first time making one of these particular um, elements for the book, so hopefully it turns out. <laughs> and then close that flap down onto that glued section. Press it in. Press, press, press. And really, really hard press that, that 
uh, fold line down. All right, let's open her up and see how it is. Oops. Ah, uh, it's perfect. Then I would probably go a step further and go just to make sure that's in. It doesn't want to fold back all the way, but that's fine. It works this way. It's the way we need it to work. <laughs> let's let that dry. Let's let that dry up before we mess with it anymore. And let's cut a piece for the, the front cover. That measures, can't recall, about four and a half by eight. So we're gonna cut a piece at four and a quarter by seven and three quarters. We'll do this one. So four and a quarter. three quarters it's always a good idea to dry fit before you glue because you know we make mistakes oh isn't it cute no we're gonna decorate the front of that, um, so we need it a little bit plain. All right, let's lay that in. This is a fun feature, don't you think? I hope you enjoyed um, making this little section. And then you could put, you could also put another piece of um, paper down here if you wanted to, um, as far as, you know, for putting more photos in. I think I'll leave mine blank for now. And then let's go and make this section here. Let's bring our scoreboard back. We need to finish making that closure. So hold this up square, lean it over, and put a pencil line. A little pencil line right up in there. Can you see that? I just put a pencil line right where that meets. You probably can't see me doing that, but... Um, like this and then mark it. Okay, so let's go back to the scoreboard and see where that gets us. So put your last score line at eight and three quarters and that takes us to nine and a half. So me, I'm gonna turn this over and put this back to eight and three quarters and then I'm gonna score at nine and a half. And we do have a little bit of bulk here, so just be gentle at first so you don't miss it. Nine and a half. And make sure you're even all up there. And do that like twice. And then come, and then pick that up, turn it over, and fold that, that score line in. There you have it, the closure. Now let's see if it works. And again, I, I like to do that because sometimes you get too much bulk in here and the measurement that I originally started with nine and three eighths is too small. All right, so now we're gonna corner around these corners on the medium. And I got this corner rounder from Amazon. I'm sure you can find them everywhere. So let's measure that section here. And that measures an uh, inch and a half. So let's cut one strip 
at inch and a quarter, a little, I'm gonna go a little over an inch and a quarter for that. And what paper do I want? Uh, maybe the plaid, maybe the plaid at an inch and a quarter. Let's see, and this, hmm. One plaid. So let's trim that to eight and a quarter first. I go a little hair over that. And then I set an inch and a quarter. And a little more. Just because. And that should work out perfectly. Let's corner around that as well. Perfect. And then also one for the inside of that. We'll do from this paper. And an inch and a half as well. I'm sorry, inch and a quarter. A little over. Inch and a quarter. Corner round. Oops, this side. put our magnets on. And when you put your magnets on, I would even suggest, if you think you're gonna use the book a lot, open and close, open and close, I would suggest gluing, not just the tape that's on there. There is there is tape on, on the ones I use. Um, I did have an issue one time with it Pulling off, but I think it could be that I didn't press it in um, all the way. But just for safety's sake, you could put a dab of glue on it. All right, last one. And we will erase that <clears throat> little mark there in a sec. This one, which way was I deciding? Yeah, that's fine. All right, I will be back after I finish uh, decorating and I'm gonna put a couple of spine pieces on which, you know, I haven't decided which ones yet, but I'll bring it back, but completed. Oh wait, let's do the magnet. Let's do the magnet. These are the magnets that I use. I get from Amazon and they're stickers. They're very thin uh, magnets. Very nice to work with for these folios as they don't really stick out that much. And put those together with the silver sides touching. Take off your little piece of paper there without lifting up the glue. <laughs> stick it on in the middle. Okay, I'm about there. And about an inch, half inch or so in from the edge here. Then we'll take that backing paper off. Let's try a little dab of glue on that. Just for security's sake. Hold that book up so that you can get it square. And you know, don't make it super snug. Just right about there. Feels good. And because we need to put, my, um, all right, all set. We need to put photos in here as well. So we need a little little breathing space. 
All right, I'll be back when this is um, decorated and I've finished the spines for a final walkthrough. All right, we're back and I have the final walkthrough for you. I have decorated the front with just one little saying on the front there and inside on the waterfall, we put a little tag here and some words in the in the frosty air and then when you open it up you have you have your card thing here let's see if I can get you to see that easier there you go and then turn the page and we have all blank pages here for you to decorate and you know put what you like in there I just want to show you how these look if I put a mat behind a photo, let's say I use navy, and she put the photo in. Isn't she darling? It's beautiful. I mean, all these pages look good with, with the mat behind it. Okay, that's the final walkthrough, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try to make this. Um, you can add your own... Um, you know, embellishments to it, you know, as far as word stickers and whatnot. Um, and also you could put in pockets this way or, you know, sideways pockets. The possibilities are endless, but this for me is perfect because I just want blank pages. So I hope you enjoyed this video and come back and, and join me for some new stuff coming up. Uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video. Uh, comment in the comment section. All of that stuff helps me out. Um, and I really enjoy making these videos for you. Hope you join me again. Have a nice day.